Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA playoff games like ahead to tonight's games. We'll go over yesterday's NHL Major League Baseball games like ahead to tonight's games. I'll do my latest NFL mock draft. We'll recap yesterday's episode of American Idol. News and notes and best bet. All right, we'll start with the NBA playoffs. We will recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to tonight. Um... The Sixers blew out the Raptors again, 112-97, take a 2-0 series lead. Joel Embiid, 31 points and 11 boards. OG Ananobi, 26 points for Toronto. Mavs over to Jazz, 110-1040, to even up the series at one apiece. Jalen Brunson, 41 points and 8 boards. Oh, what a great game for him. And Donovan Mitchell had 34 and 5 assists for Utah. Warriors over to Nuggets, 126-106 to take a 2-0 series lead. Stephen Curry, 34 points. Nikola Jokic had 26-11-4. All right, tonight, 7-30, TNT. If the Hawks in the Heat, Heat trying to go up 2-0. My projections, Miami by 10 total, 220 and three quarters. And we got here... Miami by 7 half total of 219. I'm going to lay to 7 half at Miami, um... I just think they're better than Atlanta. Um, and I think that this could be another double to do win for Miami. They don't have Clip Capella, Atlanta. 8.30 NBA TV of the Timberwolves and the Grizzlies. Game two. My projection is Memphis by seven and a quarter. It's a little 227 and a half, and it's seven and 240. I love the under. Um, I think there's going to be a little bit more defense play in this game. I think that. The Memphis money line and the under would be a good same game parlay, as the Grizzlies would even up the series at one apiece. And at ten o'clock on TNT, they have the Pelicans and the Suns. My projection is Phoenix by sixteen and a half, total two twenty and thirteen twentieths, and it's nine and a half and two twenty one and a half. I love the Suns again, laying the points. Um, I just don't think the Pelicans are as good as the Suns. The Suns are the team to beat in this playoffs. And I think they're they're gonna destroy a lot of people. So getting the Suns at under ten against a team that um really um if they were in the East wouldn't have made the playoffs. Um I'm gonna lay the points with the Suns again against the Pelicans even up this thing at one apiece. Now we'll move on to the NHL. We'll recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to a busy slate for tonight. Flames over the Blackhawks, 5-2. Caps over the Avs, 3-2. Canes over the Coyotes, 5-3. Devils upset the Golden Knights, 3-2. Kraken over the Sens, 4-2. And the, uh, uh, the Canucks over the Stars, 6-2 to keep their postseason hopes alive. Now we move on to tonight. A ton of games. 7 o'clock give the Flyers and the Maple Leafs from Toronto. Leaves are minus 480. Flyers are plus 360 over under 7. Overs, even money. Unders, minus 132. Um, two and a half is the puck line. It's minus 110 each way. I'm going to take the Flyers puck line plus two and a half and minus 110. Um, the Leafs are still playing. Uh, well, it looks like by the day that they're going to finish second in the, in the division. Um, but if anything, you want to uh, keep playing for seeding and stop. Uh, or not stop trying because you want to have more points than the Metro winner in case you're in the conference finals against the Metro winner or um, say the Rangers come in second and that's your opponent in the conference finals. You want home ice advantage over the Metro, uh, the representative of the Metro. So I think it's important for Leafs to win these games, but um, I think it'll be competitive. So give me the Flyers again in the two and a half pucks. Red Wings Lightning. Lightning minus 550. Red Wings 4 to 1. Over under 6.5. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. Red Wings plus 2.5 is minus 118. Lightning minus 2.5 is minus 102. I'm going to go with the over. I think that the Lightning might do that by themselves. Wild Canadiens. Wild minus 285. Montreal plus 230. Over under 6.5. Over is minus 115. Under is minus 105. Wild minus 1.5 is minus 113. Canadians plus 1.5 is minus 106. I'm going to go here with the under. It might be Carey Price against Mark andre Fleury. I really like the idea of the under. Under in Montreal, puck line would be a fun same-game bar life. 
Jets, Rangers. Rangers minus 205. Jets plus 168. Over under 6. Minus 110 each way. Rangers minus 1F is plus 118. Jets plus 1F is minus 142. I like the over. Um, I think that this will be a higher scoring game than people think. The Rangers are trying to get ready for the playoffs and playing for first and then their division. So, give me the over. 7.30, Panthers, Islanders. Panthers minus 215, Islanders plus 176, over under 6.5, overs minus 134, unders plus 110. Panthers minus 1.5 is plus 116, Islanders plus 1.5 is minus 140. Tough one. Um, Panthers playing for the President's Trophy. Um, some of a shot, the Avs lost last night. So they're two back of the Avs for the President's Trophy. Still playing for it. Um... I like the under. I think the Islanders will play a little bit of defense. I think um, Ilya Sorokin will start. So, I like the under. 8 o'clock, Bruins, Blues. Blues minus 126. Bruins plus 105. Over, under 6.5. Over, even money. Unders minus 122. Bruins plus 1.5 is minus 240. Blues minus 1.5 is plus 95. The Blues are playing for home ice in the first round. They'll probably play the Wild. Barring a collapse by either team. Boston's in fourth, um, battling for um, third in the division and potential um, home ice. Like, you want more points than Pittsburgh or Washington in case they go on a run. Um, So, I'm going to go with the Blues to win, but the play for the game, I think this goes to overtime. Um, I'm going to go tie plus 330. Next up, you have the Flames and the Predators. This is another big one. The Flames are minus 134. Preds are plus 114. Over under 6.5. Over is even money. Under is minus 130. Flames minus 1.5 is plus 188. Predators plus 1.5 is minus 230. So the Canucks won again last night. So um, they're still in it. Um, Vancouver could finish in the top three in their division. So don't rule that out either. So Nashville Dallas tied in the wild card. But if you're Nashville, you want to... Go ahead of Dallas for the wild card. They're both tied 91 apiece, each with um, five games left, six games left. So I'm going to go with the Preds at plus 114. And plus Calgary has a playoff spot done. They just need a division, but this game's more important for the Preds, so I'm going to take the Preds at home. 10 o'clock, ESPN, Kings Ducks from Anaheim. Kings minus 170, Ducks plus 140, over under 6, over is even money, unders minus 124. Kings minus 1F is plus 146, Ducks plus 1F is minus 178. The, the Kings absolutely need this game for um, playoff seeding. Um, if they lose to the Ducks and Vancouver wins against Ottawa, Vancouver's going to be two back a third in the division. So the Kings need the game. I'm going to go with. Los Angeles in regulation at minus 115. And 10 o'clock, you have the Suns and the Canucks. The Canucks are minus 255. The Suns are plus 205 over under 6.5. Overs minus 122. Under is even money. Ottawa plus 1.5 is minus 120. Vancouver minus 1.5 is even money. Um, Second of a, of a back, the back for Vancouver makes me nervous. Um, I don't think you'll see Thatcher Demko. I think you'll see... The backup in that tonight, um, Halak. Um, Ottawa's not a good scoring team either. They're also on the second of a back-to-back. I hate the pick, but I'm going to lay the one and a half with the Canucks on the puck line and even money. Hate the pick, but I'm good. That's where I have to go. And a meaningless game at 10-3 between the Blue Jackets and the Sharks. Um... So the East playoffs are locked and loaded from a who's in it standpoint. Um, so this is a meaningless game. Sharks minus 134. Blue Jackets plus 112. Over under 6. Over is minus 106. Under is minus 114. Columbus plus 1.5 is minus 50. Trucks minus 1.5 is plus 202. Teams playing out the string here. I'm going to go with Columbus outright plus 112. All right, Major League Baseball. We'll recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to 
today's slate. Twins over the Red Sox, 8-3. Brewers over the Pirates, 6-1. Cubs over the Rays, 4-2. Astros over the Angels, 8-3. Rocks over the Phils, 4-1. A's over the Orioles, 5-1. Pods over the Reds, 4-1. Dodgers over the Braves, 7-4. Um, White Sox, Guardians postponed due to inclement weather. Make up date July 12th. Diamondbacks, Nationals postponed due to rain. Make up date April 19th. Giants, Mets postponed due to rain. Make up date April 19th. So... Um, a couple double headers today. Um, one o'clock you have the D backs and the Nationals. Um, Madison Bumgarner and Josiah Gray. This would have been the pitching matchup from last night. Um the lines up aren't yet on uh, FanDuel. I'm gonna check DraftKings very quickly. See if they're up there. And they're not, but um, if I was mistaken yesterday, the uh, Giants are favored, or the Nats are favored, so I will probably would go in theory here with um, tie after five. Three o'clock, Giants-Mets game one, Alex Cobb and Tyler McGill. Um, Mets minus 126, Giants plus 108 over on their seven, overs minus 104, under's minus 118. Giants plus one half is minus 196, Mets minus one half is plus 162. I'm going to go... With first half result, Mets plus 110. So is it still seven inning doubleheader? I don't think so. Six o'clock, you have the White Sox and the Guardians. Dallas Keuchel and Shane Bieber. Um, Guardians minus 144. White Sox plus 122 over under 7.5. Overs minus 105. Unders minus 115. White Sox plus one half is minus one seventy. Guardians minus one half is plus one forty four. I'm gonna go with the over. This is a bank among the bullpens imploding. Six thirty. Yanks Tigers. Garrett Cole and Tyler Alexander. Yanks minus two twenty. Tigers plus one six one eighty four. Over under seven half. Overs minus one twenty. Others minus one hundred two. Yanks minus one half is minus one eighteen. Tigers plus one half is minus one hundred two. So here I'm calling for um, a classic throwback performance by Garrett Cole. Um, for this game, oh, but I can see the Yankees going off offensively too. So I'm going to go over four and a half first half plus 108. So banking on like four, one Yankees or something like that in the first half. Cardinals, Marlins, Adam Wainwright and Jesus Luzardo. Cards minus 116, Marlins minus 102, over under 7.5, overs minus 118, unders minus 102. Cards minus 1.5 is plus 146, Marlins plus 1.5 is minus 176. Um, Jesus Luzardo off to a good start this year in two starts, but I'm going to go with Wainwright and the Cardinals at minus 116. 7 o'clock, game two, D-backs, Nats. Tyler Gilbert and Jonah Don. Um... This line isn't out yet either. Usually teams split double headers, so I might consider the D-backs in game two as a play. Blue Jays, Red Sox. You say Kikuchi and Nathan Navaldi. Sox minus 154, Blue Jays plus 130, over under 9, minus 110 each way. Jays plus 1F is minus 166, Red Sox minus 1F is plus 138. I love the over. I think this is over, 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 over. Love it. 7.30, Pirates, Brewers. JT Brubaker and Corbin Burns. Brewers minus 275. Pirates plus 225. Over on their 7.5. Over is minus 102. Under is minus 120. Pirates plus 1.5 is plus 108. Brewers minus 1.5 is minus 130. I like the over. This is a bank on Pittsburgh's bullpen imploding. 7.30 as well. Game 2, Giants-Mets. Logan Webb and Max Scherzer. Great game. Mets minus 132. Giants plus 112. Over under 6.5. Overs minus 110. Unders minus 112. Giants plus 1.5 is minus 205. Mets minus 1.5 is plus 168. I love the over. One of these bullpens I think could implode. Race Cubs. Matt Whistler and Justin Steele. Um, let's, let's say uh, Josh Fleming here for Tampa. So we'll see. Um, 
Each team is minus 108 over under 7.5 minus 110 each way. Rays minus 1.5 is plus 155. Cubs plus 1.5 is minus 188. I'm going with the Rays on the money line. They're just better than the Cubs. Um, 8 o'clock, you have the Angels and the Astros. Patrick Sandoval and Fran Valdez. Astros minus 162. Angels plus 136. Over under 8. Over is minus 104. Under is minus 118. Angels plus 1.5 is minus 160. Astros minus 1.5 is plus 132. I'm going to go with the... Astros run line, minus one half at plus 132. Twins Royals, Chris Archer and Carlos Hernandez. Twins minus 112, Royals minus 104, over under 8.5, over is minus 106, under is minus 114. Twins minus one half is plus 146, Royals plus one half is minus 178. I love the over in this spot. Love it. 830, Phillies Rockies. Kyle Gibson and Kyle Freeland, the Battle of the Kyles. Phillies minus 142, Rockies plus 120, over under 11.5, overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Phils minus 1.5 is plus 112, Rockies plus 1.5 is minus 134. Um, I'm going to go with the Rockies plus 120. Um, I think Kyle Freeland will be better. Um, I know this is a bad matchup, but um, I think Kyle Freeland will be better. This is his shot. 9.30, Orioles A's. Uh, Cole Irvin's going for Oakland. We don't know who's going for Baltimore. And the line's not even up yet on FanDuel. DraftKings doesn't have it up yet either. But depending on who goes for Baltimore, I might take them as a dog. Reds Pods. Rivera, San Martin, and Joe Musgrove. Pods minus 200, Reds plus 168, over under 7.5, minus 10 each way. Reds plus 1.5 is minus 126, Pods minus 1.5 is plus 105. I'm going to try what I did for best bet yesterday again as my pick here. That's the over 7.5 and, and minus 110. Rangers Mariners, John Gray, Robbie Ray. So that's the Battle of the Rays. Mariners minus 144, Texas plus. 122 over under 7.5 minus 10 each way. Texas plus 1.5 is minus 176. Rays or Mariners minus 1.5 is plus 146. I love the over. Love, love, love the over. And last but not least, 10 o'clock on TBS. Yes, TBS has Tuesday night games now. You have the Braves and the Dodgers. Max Fried, Walker Bueller. Great game. Freddie Freeman against his old team again. Dodgers minus 154. Braves plus 130 over under 7.5. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Braves plus one half is minus 72. Dodgers minus one half is plus 142. I'm going to say um, the Braves went out right here. Plus 130. Don't feel good about it, but the Dodgers, to me, are just due to lose. All right, now I'm going to do my NFL mock draft. This is my third mock draft of the year. Um, it's interesting. A lot of guys moving around. So without further ado, here we go. Number one, Jacksonville Jaguars. Tavon Walker, defensive end, Georgia. Walker's getting a lot of buzz to be the number one overall pick right now, and it's interesting. And um, I'm not so sure. Not so sure if he's the guy there. Number two, the Detroit Lions. Aiden Hutchinson, defensive end, Michigan. How about the Lions getting the top guy in the draft? Follow them at two. That would be wonderful. For a rebuilding Lions team. And he would be their best pass rusher since Ndamukong and Sue. Number three, the Houston Texans. Evan Neal, offensive tackle, Alabama. The Texans have some interesting uh, can't-go-wrong picks here. Um, I like Neal. Um, I think he's best lineman in the draft. And he'd be good opposite uh, Laramie Tunsil. Number four, the New York Jets. Kevon Thibodeau, defensive end, Oregon. Thibodeau, to me, has the most upside in this draft. He's not the best player, but he's the player with the most upside. He's been compared to the likes of the Bosa's and Chase Young, Miles Garrett, and same with um, Aiden Hutchinson. Or more so Hutchinson than Thibodeau. But um, if Thibodeau lives up to the height, then he'd give the Jets a much-needed boost in their front seven. Number five, the New York Giants. Ike Aquanu, offensive tackle guard, NC State. Um, The Giants need... Offensive line help. Um, Aquanu is super versatile. He can play either position. 
but they need a long-term guy to go with Andrew Thomas. Number six, Carolina Panthers, Charles Cross, offensive tackle, Mississippi State. Everyone and their brother is penciling in a quarterback for this spot for the Carolina Panthers. I'm not convinced that it's a certain that this is going to be a quarterback spot. Cross, um, coming up a breakout year in college, um, really put himself in the spot. And some teams are uh, have some concerns across, whether last year was aberrational or not. Number seven, the New York Giants from the Chicago Bears. Ahmad Sauce Gardner, quarterback, Cincinnati. This would be a tremendous pick um, for the Giants, and both these picks here would be tremendous for new GM Joe Shane. Um, Gardner is a safe bet here among um, defensive backs. Um, if they go with Sauce here, some of their veterans could be trade bait if they aren't already. Number eight, the Atlanta Falcons. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. This is a need pick for Atlanta um, with the suspension of Calvin Ridley. I like Wilson a lot. He's steady. And um, he's somebody that uh, can come in and play right away. Nine, the Seattle Seahawks from the Denver Broncos. Malik Willis, quarterback, Liberty. There's a lot of momentum for Seattle to draft a quarterback with the ninth pick. Um. Willis is getting the most hype among the quarterbacks right now, but I'm not convinced that any quarterback in this draft is a franchise changer. Number 10, the New York Jets from the Seattle Seahawks. Drake London, wide receiver, USC. This would be a really nice pick for the Jets. They need weapons around Zach Wilson. And London and Wilson I like as a combo. 11, the Washington Commanders. Derek Stigley Jr., cornerback, LSU. This would be a really good pick for the Commanders. Um, they need some uh, youth in their secondary. Um, Stigley has a ton of upside. He has the most upside of the cornerbacks, arguably, although Sauce has the um, is the safest bet. Number 12, the Minnesota Vikings. Kyle Hamilton, safety Notre Dame. This would be a monster steal for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Hamilton was thought to be a top five pick not long ago, but um, his stock dropped. 13, the Houston Texans from the Cleveland Browns. Jermaine Johnson, defensive end, Florida State. With the second of their two picks, um, I have Houston going um, pass rush, which um, would be wise. Um, Johnson's a steady guy. Um, conceivably can go top 10 in the draft. 14, the Baltimore Ravens. Tyler Lindenbaum, center, Iowa. What a great pick this would be for Baltimore. Um, who can go in any direction they'd like. Um, Bradley Bowe's been left as a free agent, so this pick would make a ton of sense. And Lindenbaum was someone that was thought out to go top 10 or top 5 not long ago. 15, the Philadelphia Eagles from the Miami Dolphins. Jordan Davis, defensive tackle, Georgia. Um, Jordan Davis is a super steady player that helped that tremendous pass for us, um, lead them to a championship with Georgia. This would be a wise pick considering um, um, Fletcher Cox is aging. 16, the New Orleans Saints from the Philadelphia Eagles. Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. This would be a really nice pick for the Saints regardless of who's playing at quarterback. Um, Olave and Michael Thomas would be a lot of fun and Fun fact, um, it'd be two Ohio State guys. 17, Los Angeles Chargers. Kenyon Green, guard, Texas A&M. Um, the Chargers are loaded right now. And uh, offensive line to me is their only weak spot. Um, Green is a plug-and-play guy, and him alongside Ray Sean Slater would be really cool. 18, the Philadelphia Eagles from the New Orleans Saints. Trent McDuffie, corner, Washington. Um, the Eagles double down on defense with their two picks, except this time in the secondary. Um, McDuffie's one of the cleaner guys in this draft. Um, he can actually start on this Eagles team. Number 19, the New Orleans Saints from the Indianapolis Colts from the Eagles, or via the Eagles. Trevor Penning, offensive tackle, Northern Iowa. Um, the Saints lost to Ron Armstead in free agency, so this pick would make a lot of sense. Um, 
Penning, to me, is someone that's kind of been flying under the radar because um, he played in the FCS, but has the tools to be a good lineman in the league. Number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Desmond Ritter, quarterback, Cincinnati. Ritter, somebody that's a fast-rising guy in the draft. Um, was a winner in college. And I think he's somebody that would intrigue the Steelers. Number 21, the New England Patriots. Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback, Clemson. Uh, this would be a really good pick for the Patriots considering they lost J.C. Jackson as a free agent. Um, Booth's stock is rising, so there's a chance that he could slide into the top 20. 22, the Green Bay Packers from the Las Vegas Raiders. Traylon Burks, wide receiver, Arkansas. The Packers are the team that absolutely has to come away with the wide receiver on day one of the draft. Um, obviously they trade away Devontae Adams. This was a pick that they traded Adams for, and Burks is super steady, and I think he would be a star. Um, 23, the Arizona Cardinals. Devontae Wyatt, defensive tackle, defensive end, Georgia. I love this pick for Arizona, um, as pass rush is a need. Um, Chandler Jones out. And Wyatt, like I said, is versatile, can play both tackle and on the end. 24, Dallas Cowboys. Jamison Williams, wide receiver, Alabama. Oh, the Cowboys are a team that could do anything here, really. Um, they trade away Amari Cooper. Um, Williams would be a good fit. I like him and CeeDee Lamb together. Like That would be so electric, so fun. 25, the Buffalo Bills, Kyler Gordon, cornerback, Washington. Um, here I have the second of two Washington corners um, off the board. Um, Gordon could start for the Bills. Um, Trey Wright coming off a knee injury. And healthy White and Kyler Gordon wouldn't be bad. 26, the Tennessee Titans, George Karlaftis, defensive end, Purdue. The Titans could be getting themselves a steal here. Um, Carleif, this was thought out to be a top 10 pick not long ago, but his stock took a huge hit. I think that would be due to a lack of production from a sack department standpoint. Number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Zion Johnson, guard, Boston College. This would be a very ideal pick for the Bucs. Um, Alex Kopp, of they lose as a free agent, um... Marpet, Ali Marpet retired. Johnson had a good senior bowl, um, which had his ro- stock rise, and he can start for the Bucks right away, helping protect the greatest quarterback of all time. 28, the Green Bay Packers. Jahan Dotson, wide receiver, Penn State. So I have the Packers doubling down at wide out here um, in the first round, which would be wise, but at the same time, they do have other needs, and they could wait for round two for a receiver, for the second receiver, or round three. Dotson is fast, and he's somebody that could do the ver- vertical threat role, replacing uh, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. 29, Kansas City Chiefs from the San Francisco 49ers via the Miami Dolphins. Christian Watson, wide receiver, North Dakota State. Like the Packers, the Chiefs arguably have to come away with the wide out here in the first round. Watson's stock rose after a great year in college with um, FCS um, North Dakota State Bison. Um, very fast receiver. Um, he won't be Tyree Kill, obviously, but he has the, the speed to be great. 30 to Kansas City Chiefs. Boye Mafe, defensive end, Minnesota. With their second of two picks, I have the Chiefs going pass rush here. Um, super fast athletic guy. Um, it could actually start for the Chiefs right away with Melvin Ingram leaving as a free agent. 31, the Cincinnati Bengals. Kair Alam, cornerback, Florida. The Bengals can go to numerous number of directions here. Um, I like the thought of Alam here. I think that the Bengals corners overachieved a year ago, so Alam would come in and, uh, really have an instant impact. And 32, the Detroit Lions from the Los Angeles Rams. Kenny Pickett, quarterback, Pittsburgh. 
A lot of people seem to think that the Lions will go quarterback here. Um, Pickett's on whose stock has dropped, ironically enough. Um, and like I said, I'm not convinced he'll be a long-term answer or really any quarterback from this class. But I think the Lions need some youth at that position, so uh, why not? All right, that was it for the draft, um, the mock draft, and now I'm going to recap last night's episode of American Idol, which was a really good episode. Um, the top fourteen was unveiled. Um, first up, um, Ava Maybe, who was re- revealed safe into the top ten, and performed "Cause I Love You" by Lizzo. Christian Gordino was revealed safe and performed Creep by Radiohead. Cameron Whipcom, um, bottom 10, sang for his life, performed If It Hadn't Been for Love by the Steel Drivers. Allegra Miles, bottom 10, had to perform for her life, performing an original song that she did called Tainted. Next up was Lady K, who was revealed safe and... Performed Bust Your Your Window by Jasmine Sullivan. Haunter Girl was revealed safe. Performing Vice by Miranda Lambert. Katria Love was revealed the bottom 10. Performed Through the Fire by Chaka Khan. Cadence Baker, bottom 10. Performed I'm Your Baby Tonight by Whitney Houston. Dan Marshall revealed safe. Stuck on You, Lionel Richie. Leah Marlene revealed safe. Performing Wish her to the well, an original. Nicolina revealed safe. She used to be mine by Sarah Bareilles. Sage, bottom 10. Performing Brown Eyed Lover by Alan Stone. Jay was also picked for the bottom 10. According to America. And performed Believer by Imagine Dragons. Noah Thompson went next. He was revealed safe and performed Cover Me Up by Jason Isbell. Next up, we learn of Justin Moran's fate. He was in the bottom 10. Performed Rise by Katy Perry. Ellie Rowe, bottom 10. Performing All I Want by Codaline. Emerson Flora was revealed safe. She performed Love in the Dark by Adele. Mike Parker revealed bottom 10. Performing Bed on Fire by Teddy Swims. Second to last, Fritz Hager. Revealed safe. Um, performing Golden by Harry Styles. And then Tristan Brissett. Bottom 10. Performing Are You Gonna Go My Way by Lenny Kravitz. So, to recap. Your top 10. Ava, Christian, Lady K, Hunter Girl, Dan, Leah, Nicolina, Noah, Emerson and Fritz. And I had Emerson in. I had Mike Parker in the top 10. I had Nicolina in the top 10. I had Jacob in the top 10. That was a bad pick. According to America. Um, I feel bad for those who uh, got voted off. We'll get into that in a moment. Hunter Girl, I was right about. Um... Allegra Miles, I had her safe. Um, she was in the bottom ten. Christian Gordino, I had safe. He was safe. Fritz, I had safe. He was safe. Cadence, I had safe, but no, she was bottom ten. And then Lady K, I had safe. Um, and the. My predictions of who the judges were going to save, I said Tristan, Jay, Dan, Ava. But the judges wound up saving Allegra, which I turned out to be right into the top 14. Jay, who I predicted would be a judge's save. Tristan, who I predicted was going to be a judge's save. And Mike Parker, who I had in the top 10. So I only had a handful of misses for the top 14 in general. Um, I missed on Noah. Um, 
I missed on Jacob. Um, I missed on, um, hmm, did I miss on Leah, or is she safe? I don't, uh, yeah, I did miss on Leah. Um, I was right about Dan being in the, in the top 14. I missed on Cadence. Um, I missed on Katria. Or no, uh, Katria, um, I missed in terms of, um, who I thought they were going to save. I'll get into that in the second, like, during the episode. So, um, four, um, and then Cameron, I did not have through either. So I, I pretty much got three quarters of the, of everybody's fates correct. And who I thought the judges were going to save, um, I thought it was down to five people for four spots. And it was the four they chose and Katria and Katria. I thought was going to get through because I, and I, the one I thought that was on the chopping block potentially was Mike Parker, but they let Mike Parker through and, um, Katria got booted off. So I did pretty good with predicting this. I, like I said, I got 15 for, t for 20, correct. In terms of um, who I had through or not. So, Leah was um, uh, safe. Noah was safe. I missed on those two. Um, I missed on Jacob. Um... So, was it only three that I missed on? Um, yeah. So, I hit with Emerson. I hit Mike. I hit with Tristan. I was right about Sage. I was right about Jay. I was right about Nicolina. I missed on Jacob. I was obviously right about Hunter. Um, I was right about Ellie. Um, Dan Marshall, I was right about. Ava, maybe I was right about. I was right about Allegra. I missed on Noah and Leah. I was right about Christian making it through. I was right about Fritz. Um, I, I was right with Katria in my projections. I was right about Cam. I was wrong about Cadence. Cadence Baker and Lady K. So, I got 16 per 20. So, 16 through 20. So, more than three quarters, I was correct. So, four-fifths of the competition, I got right in terms of uh, safe and not safe. So, that's actually pretty cool. And then, um, um, the weekend's episode and uh, Monday's episode next week are going to be a lot of fun, which we'll get into on the Friday podcast. All right, now we'll go to news and notes for today. Um, Nicole Jokic got ejected against the Warriors. We forgot to uh, talk about this after um, a second technical as uh, Denver um, got blown out, as we talked about. Um, Marcus Smart was announced the Defensive Player of the Year. Which is amazing. Um, and Gary Payton surprises Smart by pulling up to Celtics practice to give Marcus Smart the award. Mikel Bridges came in second. Rudy Gobert came in third. Fourth place was Bam Abadayo. Fifth was Jaron Jackson Jr., who I thought should have won it. Giannis came in sixth, Robert Williams seventh, Drew Holiday eighth, Al Horford ninth, Draymond tenth, and Matthias Thibault eleventh. 
for defensive player of the year voting. Mikhail Bridges says it ain't easy guarding MFs on the island every night. As he has nothing but respect between the candidates. Um, Joel Embiid and Nick Nurse had some words after game two, which was really interesting. And, and then Embiid said that Nick Nurse was complaining about foul calls. Um, we talked about earlier that it's Freddie Freeman's first series against the Braves. And what does he do in his first at-bat against the Braves? Hits his first home run as a Dodger. Um, Scotty Pippen Jr. enters the draft, as does Mark Williams of Duke, um, and Jalen Duran of Memphis as well. And in Indiana lands a five-star forward, Malik Renault. So that's a bit a nice pickup for Mike Woodson in Indiana. Um, the match returns to TNT on June 1st, featuring Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and more from Las Vegas, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, Denzel Ward gets an extension, five years, $100.5 million, with 71 a quarter guaranteed. He'll be the highest paid corner in history, which is wild. Look good on the Browns for locking up a long-term asset. Dylan Larkin out the rest of the season for the Red Wings after undergoing successful core muscle surgery. Um, Dylan Larkin had a great year this year for the Red Wings in year two of his captaincy. I feel like um, Larkin's going to be a Red Wing for life. He's just a really, really good player. 69 points in 71 games. 31 goals, 38 assists this year. Negative plus minus, which isn't good. But great year for Dylan Larkin, unfortunately, coming to an end here. Betting against the Red Wings might be smart down the stretch. Jake Arrieta retires from Major League Baseball after 12 seasons. Um... Was an all star, won a sign with the Cubs. Um, really broke out in the middle of the 2010s in 2015 when the Cubs really surprised everybody that year and had a 2 1 series lead on the Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken, in the 2015 playoffs. Um, Arietta was a big part of that. They signed John Lester to winter prior, and then, um, that was the year Chris Bryant came up. Rizzo had one of his better seasons. Uh, Javier Baez didn't turn into the player who he is now yet. But that was when Jake Arrieta got good. And his breakout was a big reason why the Cubs were able to end their long World Series drought. But congrats, Jake Arrieta. Great career. And um, one of the better Cub pitchers over the past... um, Decade or so. Um, are we the best Cubs pitcher over the last decade? I mean, you can make a case for Lester. You can make a case for some other guys. Kyle Hendricks. But Arietta's right up there. Top three, I'd say. Um, non-sports news. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo says one of his newborn twins has passed away. He says it's the greatest pain. It is a great pain. I mean, it's a shame. Um, it was a, tw- a twin boy, um, newborn. Thoughts and prayers going out to Christian's family and Christian himself. It's very sad. And um, it's just really, really sad. And a big one dropping this morning. Um. NJ Transit drops the mask requirement. That is wonderful news for travelers and um, people that work for NJ Transit as well. Um, So that's really good news to close out the the, uh, 
news and notes segment for the show. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I really like over 7.5 between the Rangers and the Mariners. That's a no-brainer. I know I lost yesterday with the over in the Padres-Reds game. Um, That's okay. Um, So I'm going to try the same number again, except with a different game. So I'm going to go with over 7.5 between the Mariners and the Rangers. I feel really good about it, so I'm going to lay a unit on it. So there you have it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from today and looking ahead to everything going on tomorrow. Um, If I'm not mistaken, um, so we have the uh, Zurich Classic of New Orleans. So this is a... uh, a dual um uh thing so uh it should be really interesting um so this will begin um i believe on thursday so this should be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll do Zurich Classic picks on the show. And then we'll preview um, Mass Singer and Survivor for tomorrow as well as recapping the two shows from last week. And tonight I'm going to have George Brew on the podcast. He hasn't been on in a while. We'll talk some hockey. We'll talk some baseball. We'll talk some betting, we'll talk some golf, and anything else that gets mentioned. All right, I hope you guys have a great day, everyone.